I'm here with Professor Patrick Dodson, prominent Yaru leader from Broome in Western Australia and also the founding director of the Indigenous Policy and Dialogue Research Centre here at UNSW. So Patrick, with Prime Minister Julia Gillard's announcement this week of the formation of an expert panel to provide advice to the government on a, on a referendum on constitutional recognition of Indigenous peoples at or before the next election, I'm curious to know that if you were on that panel, what kind of changes would you be advocating? Well, firstly, I'd want to make sure that um, we had a decent process. I think to make the changes before you've got a good process in place is uh, challenging in terms of getting the critical numbers of people to support a referendum. And how you frame the propositions that may go to vote is, is also critical. Um, there are two things I think about the, or probably three things about the Constitution. One is there's the recognition issue where the uh, Indigenous people are recognised in a preamble. Uh, that's one matter. And maybe we ought to just do that and get on with it. Uh, if that's, uh, you know, because that's not really substantive. Uh, and then there's the existing uh, capacities within the Constitution and I think there needs to be some serious analysis and research around what it is uh, that has capacity there for Indigenous recognition and rights. Um, and the third thing, of course, is the International Declaration on Indigenous Peoples' Rights, which uh, needs to be incorporated into domestic law in this, in this country at some point. And obviously how that now butts up against anything we might want to do substantively uh, in, in uh, the in way of the constitutional change. So, um, and that may not necessarily mean an amendment to the constitution, that might just mean amending the constitution in a way where that, that particular international uh, instrument has some uh, real role to play in the way policies and uh, uh, affect Indigenous peoples when they're made by parliament. So uh, there's a lot of room for discussion and I would hope that we... Uh, approach this in a more mature way than what I've seen to date and that um, if there is division between the parties then I don't think there ought to be uh, proceeding with any kind of vote on this. Mm. No, I, I agree with that. The chances of, of failure are much higher than the chances of success at, at this point, particularly if there is um, a, a, a decline in that bipartisan support. Absolutely. But so far some people have described this as nothing more than a political stunt and the convening of a panel as just another talk fest. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I think they're predictable responses. Um, Australians tend to be cynical about many things that politicians do. Uh, and that might all be true um, in terms of being a stunt or not. But I, I do think that uh, the Prime Minister has approached this with a view to dealing with a serious issue that we've been beleaguered by throughout the whole colonisation of this country and the lack of any real recognition of Indigenous peoples in this constitution that is the, the foundation, seminal document that guides our democracy. So I do think that there is a, a degree of seriousness about it. The, the degree to which we want to go in changing the constitution, I think, is, uh, is something where there's a lot of argument about. Uh, and that's, that's understandable as well. Um, so I, I, I would hope we can arise to the challenge rather than simply slip back into the predictable forms of argument or positions that people would adopt uh, to this, given, given that our success with referenda in this country is not so, uh, so astoundingly uh, you know, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. I think this, the stakes are very, are very high with this. The Prime Minister has said that if this referendum doesn't succeed, we're unlikely to see another one like it. Uh, and you yourself have made similar comments. Can you explain why you think that is? Well, I think Australian and particularly governments tend to uh, take an attitude, whether they're Labor or Liberal or whether it's the sort of uh, multi mixed parties uh, that run the country at the moment, take a view that uh, once they've raised an issue, in Indigenous affairs, if it either if it doesn't get up, or even if it does get up with with marginal achievement of the original objective, uh, there's a tendency to say we've dealt with that issue, and therefore let's rule a rhyme under it and and go forward. Um, and I think that's really what the Prime Minister's saying. I mean, you know, the Prime Minister's lifetime may not be coincidental with her period as, as Prime Minister. Um, so uh, Parliament's change and the new parliament might take a different view. 
Uh, so I'm not particularly daunted by that aspect of, of what she's had to say. But I do think it's, it's a signal that we need to take this seriously and um, seize the opportunity that is being presented, even though that opportunity may well be minuscule in terms of the high, high levels of aspiration mm. within the Indigenous communities and within the, the broader society. Mm. Well, it's a privilege to be working with you um, on those issues, Patrick, and it's a privilege to be speaking with you this morning. So thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Sarah. Fine.